Listen to the first 30 seconds of the track Tropicalia by Caetano Veloso and you'll be carried away to some other realm. It's a heady swirl of rumbling percussion, rasping vocals and mischievous, almost unearthly whistles. If it sounds like the opening barrage of a psychedelic revolution, well, that's because in many ways it was. It kick-started the radical artistic movement with which it shared a name, a wave of creativity that swept across Brazil in little more than a year before crashing down to earth in spectacular style. It invigorated generations of innovators, enraged a brutal military dictatorship and caused reverberations still felt to this day. This is Tropicalia. I'll get out the way now that I will try my best to pronounce all these Brazilian names correctly, but do bear with me if I struggle. To understand Tropicalia, which is sometimes known as Tropicalismo, you need to understand the volatile times from which it sprung. In 1964, Brazil's democratically elected president was overthrown with outside help from the CIA, leaving the country in the clutches of an exceptionally harsh, strictly conservative military dictatorship. The years that followed were vicious, with crackdowns on civil liberties across society. Freedom of expression, especially for artists and the wider media, was among the many casualties. On the other end of the spectrum, an influential group of far-left students were intent on preserving what they saw as the cultural purity of Brazil, free from the apparently corrupting influence of foreign capitalist lands. In the midst of all this, however, a group of experimental artists were starting to make noise, quite unlike anything heard before with roots in the Bahia region, later blossoming in the metropolis of Sao Paulo, and with a cultural purview that extended far beyond the borders of Brazil, they became known as the Tropicalistas, a collective more interested in bending and breaking the rules than following them. This unsurprisingly put them at odds with both Brazil's dictatorship and Marxist youth, and eventually led to the arrest and exile of some of Tropicalia's leading forces. But we'll get to all that later. First, let's talk about what made the movement so radical in the first place. Tropicalia was a playfully, purposefully anachronistic fusion of the known and unknown. It took sounds that were familiar to the Brazilian ear, the likes of bossa nova and samba, and subverted them with all manner of alien noise. The whirring psychedelia that had been entrancing audiences in the UK and America was chief among these extraterrestrials, accompanied by the fizzing counterculture spirit of 60s rock. Strands from Western pop, soul, funk and R&B were weaved into it too while the African rhythms that were already active in Brazilian music were electrified with fresh bolts of energy. It all combined for something that felt bracingly new, but unmistakably Brazilian. Tom Zé, one of Tropicalia's finest proponents, and someone who we'll meet again later, told Pitchfork in 2017, Tropicalia became a tornado capable of stirring plant grafts, fertilizers, nutrients, and compost in the subsoil of the country. It stirred up the guts deep in Brazilian soil and allowed budding brain creativity to thrive. And it wasn't just about the music. Poetry, visual art, film, and theater were all bubbling away within the Tropicalia cauldron. That's a whole other world to explore, but in this video, we're focusing on the music. So let's discuss some of the main players. Dive headfirst into Tropicalia, and one name in particular is unavoidable, Caetano Veloso. He's the artist we heard right at the start of this video, and it was this record, the first of four self-titled albums that really got the musical fire burning. It was released in 1968, the golden year for Tropicalia, in which most of its best albums were released, and it was thrillingly eclectic, with the kind of voracious creativity that became intrinsic to Tropicalia. In fact, Veloso himself summed it perfectly in one of his most widely quoted reflections on Tropicalia. He said, The idea of cultural cannibalism fit us, the Tropicalistas, like a glove. We were eating the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix. Still, if there's one perfect place to start, it's with an album that came out a few months later in the summer of 68, Tropicalia Upanis Circensis. The 12 track collaboration is widely regarded as the genre's defining release. Veloso's there, writing or performing on all but two of the songs, and is joined by the most potent tropicalistas of the time Gilberto Gil, Tom Zé, Gal Costa, Rogério Duprat, the band Os Mutantes, and more. The album cover, on which we can see a number of those artists, is a semi surreal tribute to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band, and you can hear echoes of the Fab Four all over the album, but that's just the start of it. The opener is Miserere Nobis. It pairs Gil's powerful, angelic voice with the frenetic, celebratory playing of Os Mutanch. On the title track, penned by Veloso and Gil, and delivered by Os Mutanch, a funereal stomp is enlivened by trippy, freewheeling instrumentation, altogether sounding like a warped Beach Boys deep cut. Vocalist Nara Leal adds some beautiful textures to the song Lindoneia, while Zé's taste for the left field can be heard in his writing of the gently hallucinatory Parque Industrial. 
Retocai o céu de anil Bandeirolas no cordão Grande festa em toda a nação Duprat, who was in charge of arrangement and conducting for the project, imbues it all with a central orchestral glamour. The album is a classic in its own right, but it also serves as a wonderful jumping off point for keen Tropicalia explorers. Check out Os Mutantes' self titled 1968 debut if you want to hear the genre's finest band, and try to imagine the era's ruling elites recoiling in horror as they hear the monstrously distorted guitars on A Minha Menina. <laughs> Or hear the band again as collaborators on Gil's sprawling self-titled epic, again released in 68. And if you want to indulge yourself in Tropicalia's leading female voice, the wonderful Gal Costa, listen to her eponymous record, this time from 1969, partly written by Veloso and Zé, alongside other luminaries such as Roberto Carlos, George Benjour and Torcato Neto. It's hard to find another Tropicalia album that fuses pop serenity with avant-garde weirdness quite as well. That Gal Costa record includes the track Baby, which finally encapsulates the dichotomy at the heart of Tropicalia. Baby. On the surface, it's a radio-friendly, sweetly romantic pop ballad, but take a closer look at the lyrics and you'll find a subtle takedown of materialistic upper-class culture, with Costa's shallow character imploring her lover to know about everything from gasoline to speaking English to be worthy of her affection. This kind of lyrical subtext was a massive part of Tropicalia, and often fundamental to its survival. Paranoid government censors kept a hawkish eye on creative output and would demand to see lyrics before they were released. Often the words would come back mutilated, as Zé put it, but on occasion, things would make it past the censors. Political and social icons were celebrated without being named, crimes and taboos were implied rather than described, howls of discontent were disguised as harmless entertainment. At the tail end of 1968, a draconian bill was passed by the Brazilian regime that allowed them to tighten their grip on creativity even more, with a particular ire for the most audacious artists. Many musicians were arrested, most notably Veloso and Gil, who were detained and exiled to London. As a movement, Tropicalia was forced to disband, go underground, retreat and regroup. The dictatorship persisted until the mid-80s, and although Tropicalia had ended just as it was getting started, Brazil's taste for incredible music never abated. The loosely defined post-Tropicalia generation produced some amazing albums. Check out Acabo Chorar by Novos Baianos from 1972, or Clube da Esquina from the same year, a spellbinding double LP from the eponymous collective led by Milton Nascimento and Lo Bosch. Veloso and Gil eventually returned to Brazil, their cultural minds expanded by London's music scene and they would go on to become royalty among the country's music scene. Gil even served as Brazil's Minister of Culture between 2003 and 2008. Others such as Costa and Carlos would cement themselves as international icons, while the likes of Zé would disappear into relative obscurity until being rediscovered decades later. Above all, Tropicalia imbued Brazilian music with a spirit of expression and invention that could never be scrubbed away and serves as a reminder that when it comes to fighting oppression, our imaginations can be our sharpest weapons. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new on this wonderful genre from Brazil. If you want me to cover any other genres, just leave a comment down below. Thank you.